episode number five of our five minute ish Friday, <laughs> um, our weekly episode all about marketing and branding. And today, Kara and I are here to talk to everyone about terms to know. Yes. Um, so, in the past several weeks, we've been talking about outsourcing your marketing or hiring someone to help with the marketing of your small <coughs> business or nonprofit. Um, and so now we're starting to get into the nitty gritty a little bit. Yeah. Get um, into the details. Right? So we want you to be able to um, understand our world, how it works, and how to work cohesively with a team um, that may be a totally different ball game or industry, you could say, that, um, that you're used to working in. And when you're in those worlds, sometimes you walk in and you go into a different kind Tell of business <laughs> and you feel like they're speaking a foreign language. Yes. I feel like the design world is definitely one of those It's worlds. a large foreign language. <laughs> right. Um, so within the English language, there's so many acronyms and abbreviations. And what we're going to talk to you about today are file types, actually. Yeah. Um, and we're going to explain those different file types and what those abbreviations stand for um, and help you understand how to go in and maybe get a logo done or work with some images or graphics um, and make sure that you understand what your designer is giving you. Yeah, so that way you know what to ask for or you know what you have or you need to get. And that way also if you take it to someone else or you have your own team of people who um, are asking you for a file, that way you know exactly what it is, you know what you need and you know what you want to look for. Right, so you might have a logo done when you start your business, and then years later you might need to take it to a printer. Yep. And the printer might say, oh, I only need an EPS file and mm -hmm. an EP what? You know, yeah. so what is that? <laughs> so this is your introduction into design terms and things you need to know. Um, yes. So first up, Kara, what's our first term? Our first thing is creative cloud. Yeah, so... That sounds so dreamy. It does, and I always get, oh, does that have to do with Apple? <laughs> no. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope, it sure doesn't. What is Creative Cloud Designer Queen? Can you so, explain it? So, Creative Cloud is brought to us by Adobe. Adobe mm -hmm. is a company um, like Microsoft or anything, it has lots of different applications and files and things that you can download and use, mainly for design purposes. Um, so anything like illustration, uh, movies, animation, all those type of things, photography can be found, all their applications they use can be found through Creative Cloud. They have about, right. what, 32 programs There's now? There's a bundle. It's a whole bunch. A whole bunch. And it's back three. in the day, there used to be, you used to buy the Creative Suite. Mm -hmm. And you had to go every time you wanted to upgrade or get the latest, greatest yeah. um, uh, software applications, you had to go and you had to buy the newest suite every year. It was very expensive. So yeah. um, they moved to Creative Cloud a few years ago and um, that's where all of our programs are housed. Yes. A good majority of them. Mm -hmm. And that way we can go from one to the other. So there's three main ones we wanna to talk to you about today to give you a little glimpse into the design world and the applications we use. Um, so those three are Adobe Illustrator, InDesign, and Photoshop. Nice. Now those um, those are all very different programs, correct? Mm. Photoshop from the others is very different, but InDesign and Illustrator can be quite similar. Um, a graphic designer will mainly use those, but will use them for slightly different reasons. Should I break it down? Yeah, all break right. that down. So, for, we'll start with Illustrator. That's my personal favorite. As a graphic designer, um, everyone has their own preference, but for me, I find it quite easy to use that application. Um, that application you can use for pretty much everything, but what most designers use it for are logos, illustrations, um, you know, print world type things. <laughs> the pretty things, as we like to call it. <laughs> for InDesign, we like to use those for, we'll use little examples, brochures. These are not ours, by the way. We did not make them. We just yes. picked them up here in the BizConnect office. Yeah. So we'll give shout outs to some of our favorite businesses. <laughs> Um, the, the home mag. <laughs> they refer business to us, so yes. Yeah. So for <laughs> sure, anything that you're mainly using text and copy and type, um, you know, or a magazine, 
you're going to use InDesign. Nice. Whereas Illustrator, you use for the pretty things, like cards. <laughs> um, you have any thoughts? Uh, no, I think that I think that's pretty clear. Um, so, what about file types? Because mm -hmm. even within that world, I know sometimes when we go and tell a client, like oh, when we're working on a website or maybe some other piece of marketing collateral and they send us an, a photo to use or a logo, we have to come back and say, oh, that's not high res, oh, that's not, we need a transparent background, can you send us a PNG? Um, sometimes, and we get that deer in the headlights look. Um, so, yes, so there are two or three main um, main file types that we use that can be used on many different applications across the board. We have a JPEG, a PNG, and a PDF. So a JPEG is basically just your typical image photograph. It's pixel yeah. based. Correct. Right? So a JPEG, when you make a JPEG, you cannot stretch it beyond mm -hmm the size that you made it at. You can resize it and make it smaller, but if you make it bigger, it's going to be really pixelated and fuzzy. Yes. Versus? Versus a PNG. A PNG is something you would use mainly for like a logo or um, some types of design work. It's something that you can, you can put a background on, but mainly you want that to be transparent. You want yeah. to show an example? So we have an example, hold up here, um, and this is just an example of a PNG with a transparent background versus a um, white background. Oh, we're going to get the, the halo ring from our ring light. So this right here is a logo that Kara designed, and it's got a transparent background. That's a PNG file. Whereas the Coastal Virginia Best Of um, logo that we were given to advertise with since we won um, <laughs> has a white background um, and it's not clear and, and transparent in the background. Hello, Shizuka. Thanks for joining. Um, so those are the differences. That's a really easy way you can tell. Yes. Mainly for logos and stuff, you do want a PNG and you do want it to be transparent. Most designers or marketing teams, they're going to ask you for transparent. Right, just so when you over, you put it mm -hmm. over the top of a graphic or you put it on something that different has colored background. a different colored background, it pops and mm -hmm. it doesn't have that white in the background of, um, yeah. of it. So it just looks much more clean and polished and professional. Going back to JPEGs though, there is a difference between a high quality, high res, and a low. And we get this question a lot and we also, when asking for photographs for different things, you know, not everyone knows the difference and knows that that is a thing. And so we just wanted to share an example so that you can see on our end when we ask for an image that's higher res, you can see the difference because it makes a huge difference in print work and even your website. Right. Can you, while I'm showing this, can you talk about what resolution means within the file? Or do you want me to do that? I'll have you do that. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to show you, I'm going to stand up here and show you again. Um, so this photo right here is low res. And if you can see that, it's not as crystal clear as the other example on this side. Oh, and I got a menu pulled up here. Um, so this one is high res and this one is low res. So when we talk about resolution in an image, what we mean is um, how many, it, it, it has to do with the pixels within the mm -hmm. image. How many pixels are in each square block. square block of the image. So the more, the higher the resolution, the more pixels in each square mm -hmm. block so that when it's blown up, it's just a clear image. It's um, easier to see. A good example would be um, with phones nowadays, you do you can get really high resolution, but the more you save it to different applications or you text it back and forth to someone, the lower the quality will be because of transferring to a site or transferring through text. It will shrink it. When you send a photo, sometimes it'll pop up and it'll go boop, and you'll have three different options where it says, the original quality, 
higher or lower. Mm -hmm. And that's your pixels. It's asking you, do you, how high of a resolution do you want to send it? And if you send it high, it still can, after a while of sending it different places or uploading it to your Facebook, it can lower the resolution. So a lot of times nowadays, everyone uploads their stuff to Facebook and then they'll delete off their phone. But if you're trying to use that photo for any kind of print work or website, it actually will lose its original resolution. And that's why sometimes if you re-download it off of Facebook, it will become a little bit fuzzy and yeah. it's harder to print and make high quality. That's why you need those original images to play with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I just wanted to show one more example of, of uh, the importance of having high quality uh, images mm -hmm. but on web so the thing is is that you would never know but on on the web you can actually use lower resolution um, images and as long as the quality the sizing is right so I wanted to show you this is a website we just launched this morning for our friend and client Taylor Patrice um, I'm gonna give her a little love go to taylorpatrice.com check out the site um, but in here she has this header image and um, so when we were taking that and making it fit into that header with the, the overlay of the logo and everything, we had to make sure that um, this image was the right size. Um, but we were able, that's actually a lower resolution image so that it doesn't, you want lower on your website um, because that affects file size as well. Yes. And a bunch of heavy, big images are going to slow your page speed way down and Google's not going to like that very much. Nope. Yeah, but that brings us to Photoshop. With all of your images, that is the photo hub and world. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Photoshop, um, you, you can also use Photoshop. So when I first uh, worked my way into, into the design world, being yeah. self-taught and all, the polar opposite of this girl, <laughs> um, I played with Photoshop a lot. I used it to design little graphics mm -hmm. and, um, you know, it wasn't good for for um, full-blown things, but it is right. good for some things, and you can still add text, and you can even do um, some movement and yeah. some different type of um, action type things, There's which is neat, fun. The old tricks within there. There are so many cool things you can do in that program. It's very extensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's the introduction. Um, was there anything else for file types? Um, I don't think so, but just, you know, it's super easy if, you know, you still want to understand it better. It's so easy to Google, you know, each type and get a little description of what they are. Again, we're really big on educating our clients and our friends, and we just want to make sure you know what files it is that when we send you work or anyone you work with, those are the files we're sending you. We're sending you PNGs, JPEGs, Illustrator files, which will have an A and an I, InDesign, which have an I and a D, and um, Photoshop. So we just wanted to give you a little knowledge on what files are actually housed in your computer. Yeah, and that is just the design world. So yes. another day we're going to dig into um, website terms, um, mm -hmm. digital marketing terms, and um, what to know about those. But that wraps it up for today's Friday yeah. episode. <laughs> um, next week we are going to go into those, um, extensive go into those, mm -hmm. those other pieces of it. So... We're going to dig a little bit into another piece of our world and hope you'll join us there. So join us next Friday. Um, if shameless self-promotion. If you are free Tuesday morning and you want to learn about the different social media pl um, platforms out there and the demographics of those and where you should be focusing your energy, we have a workshop Tuesday morning at 9 o'clock here at the BizConnect Resource Center in Norfolk. Um, tickets are on bizconnecthr.com. And hopefully we'll see you either there or at an event or next Friday on our video. Yeah. Thanks for joining. Bye. Bye.